In de maanden na 11 september krijgt het Duitse bedrijf Convar de opdracht om te proberen harde schijven van computers uit de puinhopen van het WTC te redden. Wat blijkt? Vlak voor de aanslagen is vanuit het WTC zelf zo'n 100 miljoen dollar illegaal weggesluist. Convar stuurt een persbericht en verklaart dat de daders waarschijnlijk hoopten dat de aanslagen alle sporen zouden wissen. Een duidelijker bewijs van voorkennis is nauwelijks denkbaar. Hierna neemt de FBI het onderzoek over en sinds vorig jaar mag er niets meer over naar buiten komen. We bellen met Convar en spreken met een woordvoerder die op creatieve manier bevestigt dat de eerdere berichten over voorkennis wel degelijk juist zijn. Is het zo? that large amounts of money were transferred illegally out of the World Trade Center on the morning of 9-11, just before the attacks? If you would look on the website, I would say yes. <laughs> uh -huh. Because that was, that was uh, the information from, uh, from a previous release. Uh -huh. If you would ask me today, I would need to tell you that we, I, I could not give you any additional information about that. That I, I'm really sorry about and if, if I would have asked you one, one year ago, what well, would you would say? Well, I would say what we had there is what we said before. Yes, exactly. Versiegelt kommen sie direkt aus New York. Beschädigte Datenträger, geborgen aus den Trümmern des World Trade Centers. Absender, das amerikanische Verteidigungsministerium. Die sehen immer so schmutzig aus. Auf den sensiblen Computerteilen hat sich eine Mischung aus Staub und Löschwasser festgesetzt, wie Zement. Hitze hat den Dreck regelrecht eingebrannt. Von der Air Force mitgeliefert und als genauso geheim eingestuft, angeschmorte Mikrofilme, in der Fachsprache Mikrofisch genannt. Auf diesen Festplatten befinden sich in digitaler Form Mikrofische in äh, zigtausendfacher Anzahl und es geht jetzt einfach darum, die beschädigten Mikrofische entsprechend wieder zu rekonstruieren über die Festplatte, die da geborgen wurde. Das sind Festplatten aus dem mittleren äh, World Trade Center Bereich, allerdings in der Nähe der Luftschächte, dort wo also noch sehr stark äh, Hitzeentwicklung durch, der, durch das Chorosin mit war, äh, das dort mit abgebrannt ist. Die sind äh, entsprechend äh, verbrannt, kontaminiert, sind also noch zum Teil mit äh, so kleinen äh, Betonschichten mit eingehüllt, ähm, aber ich bin zuversichtlich, dass wir die aufbereiten können. Die Spezialisten in Pirmasens haben in den vergangenen Monaten schon mehr als 400 Festplatten wieder lesbar gemacht. Denn die Experten beherrschen ein weltweit einzigartiges Verfahren, Datenrettung mittels Lasertechnologie. Die Amerikaner setzen auf die Erfahrung des deutschen Unternehmens. Wenn die Daten besonders sensibel eingestuft werden, dann ist auch entsprechendes Sicherheitspersonal von den entsprechenden Behörden mit vor Ort, um einfach zu gewährleisten, dass die Verwahrung der entsprechenden Datenträger auch den Sicherheitsrichtlinien entspricht. Gleich nach den Anschlägen vom 11. September haben amerikanische Ermittler Spezialteams in die Trümmer geschickt, um nach Beweismaterial und sensiblen Unterlagen zu suchen auch um herauszufinden, wer hinter verdächtigen Börsenspekulationen stecken könnte, die nur im Zusammenhang mit den Anschlägen Sinn ergeben. Es gab Aktienoptionsgeschäfte in vom Anschlag betroffene amerikanische Fluglinien und Versicherungsgesellschaften aus dem Trade Center. Das liegt den Verdacht nahe, dass die Spekulanten im Voraus von den Anschlägen gewusst haben müssen. Wenn es Insiderhandel war, dann muss es jemand aus dem Umfeld von Al-Qaida gewesen sein. Der Antiterrorspezialist spricht über das, was die amerikanische Börsenaufsicht seit Monaten untersucht. Sie fahndet nach den Hintermännern, die im großen Stil an den Anschlägen verdient haben. Behördenchef Harvey Pitt sagte dazu vor Kongressabgeordneten, wir werden sie finden, wo immer sie sind. Auf Nachfrage erklärte die Börsenaufsicht im heute Journal, zum Stand andauernder Ermittlungen gebe es keinen Kommentar. Auch die Pirmasenser Computerexperten wollen aus Geheimhaltungsgründen nichts über bereits gewonnene Erkenntnisse sagen. Sie lassen uns das Ausmaß der Ermittlungen ahnen, indem sie uns den Preis pro Festplatte verraten. Zwischen 25.000 bis 50.000 US-Dollar. Die erheblichen Kosten der Datenrettung deuten darauf hin, dass sich der hohe Aufwand für die Auftraggeber lohnt. I'm curious about the, the, uh pool of molten steel that was found in the bottom of the, of the towers. Um, I, I am too. 
<laughs> and it, Please tell me about it. Have you, have you seen it? Why, no, not personally, but my witnesses there found huge poles of molten steel beneath the towers. And uh, scientists, some scientists don't think that the uh, collapse of the building could have melt, melted all that steel. And uh, uh, professor, physics professor analyzed some of the steel, <laughs> and uh, Stephen Jones, and he found evidence of, uh, of thermate residue, mm -hmm. which would explain how the buildings collapsed by means of pre-planted explosives. So have you analyzed the, uh, the steel for uh, any of those residues? Um, first of all, let's go back to your basic uh, premise that there was uh, a pool of molten, molten steel. Um, I know of absolutely nobody, no eyewitness who said so. You'd get down below and you'd see molten steel, yeah, molten down. steel running down the channel rails, like you're in a foundry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like lava. Like, like, like lava. lava from a volcano. The fires got very intense down there and actually melted beams where it was molten steel that was being dug out. It's this fused element of, of steel, mo molten steel and concrete and all of these things all fused by the heat into one single element. And almost like a chunk of lava from Kilauea or Iceland where they're very sharp but, but breakable shards on the end here. This eight-ton steel I-beam is six inches thick. It was selected to be preserved for future generations for the near-perfect horseshoe-like bend formed during the collapse. I found it hard to believe that it actually bent because of the size of it and how there's no cracks in the iron. It bent without almost a single crack in it. It takes thousands of degrees to bend steel like this. Typically, you'd have buckling and tearing on the tension side, but there's no buckling at all. You saw it steel, some of the thickest steel I've ever seen bent like a pretzel. And you just couldn't imagine the force that that took. Where the grapplers were, were pulling stuff out, uh, big sections of iron that were literally on fire on the other end. They would hit the air and burst into flames, which was uh, pretty spooky to see. There was even a point where um, you would create an air pocket by moving steel, fueling the fires on the ground, it would ignite cars, and cars would just blow up. But, you know, these underground fires were just uh, like the fires of hell. This is how it's been since day one. Oh, it's unbelievable. And this is six weeks later, almost six weeks later. And as we get closer to the center of this, it gets hotter and hotter. It's probably 1,500 degrees. We've had some small windows into um, what we thought was a core at some point, and it looked like a, uh, an oven, you know, it was just roaring inside. And it was just a bright, bright reddish-orange color. See that stuff he's pulling out? What was that shit? You're gonna hold, we're going to hold off on the water. See the stuff he's pulling out? Yeah. It's red hot. If we hit it too much steam, you won't be able to see okay. what he's doing. Great. You see how this debris is still smoking? That's when the fire is going to still burn it. Eight weeks later, we still got fires burning. Every now and then, one of the pieces of equipment will dig in, will open up a small area, the oxygen will rush in, and you'll get this plume of brown, black smoke coming up. That's because that fire just got more oxygen. So, I mean, these things are burning. At one point, I think they were about 2,800 degrees. Underground, it was still so hot that molten metal dripped down the sides of a wall from Building 6. There were fires of 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit below the ground. And all of a sudden, he comes out of this little tunnel, screaming, wait till you see what I found. And he pulls in ministers and uh, officials, and there, this cross is fully extended, melted together with the intense heat. The two beams were never initially part of the same structure. Heat literally melted them together. And the piece of metal that's draped over was molten metal that had literally fallen over one of the arms. Steel-toed boots is one of the biggest things. Um, steel-toed boots? Steel-toed boots. Out still on the rubble, it's still, uh, I believe, 1,100 degrees. The guy's boots just melt within a few hours. Uh, it was literally steaming. Your boots would melt in certain areas. That's how hot it was. The steel was coming out red in certain areas from the first couple of weeks at least. Go back to your basic uh, premise that there was uh, a pool of molten, molten steel. Um, I know of absolutely nobody, no eyewitness who said so, nobody who's produced it. Uh, I was on the site, I was on the steel yards, so I can't, I don't know that that's so. 
There's uh, a video so of it. around 2,600 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Um, I think it's probably pretty difficult to get that kind of uh, uh, temperatures in a, um, uh, in a fire. So I, I don't know the basis. I, I can't uh, you know, address your question if I, if I don't know the basis. Well, NASA pictures, uh, thermal uh, images showed those, those sorts of temperatures in the basement. Would you send them to me? Okay. My name is Mark, and I'm the individual who was questioning Dr. Gross, and he asked me to email to him those thermal images. When I approached him after his talk to get his email address for that purpose, he refused to provide it to me. I think this is important because it reveals the attitude of the NIST investigators, which is one of willful ignorance of what really happened on 9-11. Okay, what do you guys want? Um, it goes along with what you're saying about first responders, training, and everything. I mean, how are we going to get health care for everybody and like that when we can't even provide for the 30,000 first responders in New York that are sick and dying from pulverized concrete, asbestos, whatever it may be in their lungs and stuff? I mean, would we be able to count on you to reopen a new investigation in 9-11? Well, I don't, I don't no, think there's a new investigation to 9-11. I mean, really cool can I ask you what you think like about World Trade Center 7 being left out of the commission uh, report? I think that's that's black helicopter stuff, I really do. You, what about Larry Silverstein? I'm telling, I'm telling you, I think I'm being honest with you. The building didn't fall then on 9-11? I, I think it is black helicopter the stuff. The buildings didn't fall? Black helicopter. World Trade Center 7, man. Now, what about when they... No, take them back to the... Guys, we got to get going. Sorry. It breaks my heart. Reopen the, my reopen the investigation. Oh, I'm Jennifer. It kills our children playing together. What happened? They did not feel that they were part of the community. We know you've been to the Bilderberg Group meetings. Why don't you talk about 9-11? It's all right. Can you let him talk? Anyway... These people did not come here to hear you speak. And yes. if you don't have any self-control, we can live with it. The people are waking up. The people are becoming aware 9-11 was an inside job. Hey, listen. We paid to come listen to this, please. An inside job? Yeah, it was an inside job. World Trade Center 7 didn't collapse by itself. Let me take. Um, we reported bombs going off the buildings along with all the firefighters and first responders. I want to know if you would support a new investigation of 9 11. I do not. I do not. I think that the 9 11 Commission did a good job. specific aspects of the uh, investigation. Of course, there would be continuous uh, to look at it, but I think that the leaders of 9-11 uh, and members of 9-11... Uh, what investigation if we do one out there? We had one. I, 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 don't, I don't believe that there was a conspiracy. You don't think there was a World Trade Center 7 or anything that they left out? What about page 286 of the commission report where the firefighters encountered badly so the burned civilians in the lobby?